what is up? Getting ready to start a new project. Got another shipment from DigiKey, one of my favorite places to get electronic components. Gonna be recycling this uh, old water controller. It's already got a transformer in it. I got a circuit board. I'm just gonna breadboard this one. Or not really breadboard, it's got some traces on it. But the circuit should be pretty simple, so I'm not gonna design a board on CAD and have it made or anything like the other project. I'm just gonna build a circuit on that, mount it in there. I'm gonna dremel a hole in the front for the 2x20, actually it's 2x16. Um, LCD display, backlit, blue with the white text, I like that. Use one of the 16 F690 microprocessors. Got two of them in that tube. That will be what everything's built around. Put a couple little buttons in there for me to set some programming stuff. It's gonna be pretty simple. This is just gonna display, um, count and display the gallons of water used on our makeup water going to our cooling towers. So, pretty basic programming. We'll have to have it saved to EEPROM and everything. That way, um, when power is interrupted, it, it keeps its uh, reading when it's powered back up. So, and I'll probably add some functions so I could go in there and manually um, calibrate the meter if I need to make it match the mechanical meter. Our meter is way up high where you can't read it. That's the only reason I'm making this one. It's kind of like a remote location to read the gallons of water used for the makeup. So, pretty cool. Okay. For stage, and it is alive. The clock is counting. Pretty much derived my programming from my old water heater timer. So that kind of gave me a head start. Just removed all the programming for uh, cycling the water heater and whatnot. So all I really do, I just need one more input um, as an interrupt, and hopefully it works as I have it configured. And I'll be able to count those gallons of water from the pulse generator in the water flow meter. That's the goal, anyway. It's the afternoon now. I kind of gave up on using the interrupt on change feature in this chip to monitor this one input. For some reason it's conflicting with the settings I have or other inputs I'm using or something. So I changed my program, did it real simple and it's working. Basically the clock is using the main interrupt to get the pulses off the 60 hertz sine wave coming out of the wall. And then uh, basically when the switch cycles coming from the water meter, every positive edge is going to uh, increase a gallon of water so as I could test it, you know. I should be pretty much ready to go. i got to add a little bit more programming um, just to, so it'll store this in the EEPROM, like in case the power goes off and on. It's basically like I go a dominant in a car, you know, if I unplug this and plug this in now. Zero. I don't want that. I'm going to have to Got to have it uh, right to EEPROM, so yeah, so I got to add that. Okay, all right, I think I'm done. Uh, program's not that sophisticated. Just got a little bit of assembler in the middle just for the interrupt. And then it's written in Pick Basic Pro. I had to use the EEPROM a little bit, so I'm able to, every minute I'm saving the counted gallons to the EEPROM. That way on power up it reads the last saved reading. So at the most you'll lose a couple gallons. You know, on the odometer if you want to call it that. And maybe even none if uh, the power goes off on the float, you know, wasn't running. Because of course the power goes out, the towers aren't gonna run, and you're not gonna be evaporating water and it's not really gonna be filling anything, so not really gonna lose track of how many gallons are being used. And every minute it backs up that data, so Pretty simple thing to read the pulse, and I'm only incrementing it on the positive edge trip of the uh, pulse that comes in from the meter. I did want to do this with a interrupt on change um, for the port, and then using some assembler, but I couldn't get it quite to work. So I don't know if that port 
just wasn't working because of confliction with other things I had set up in that chip, which happens. I just didn't catch it or what, but I just did it without an interrupt and just did it by monitoring the pin. The program's so short that it runs through there um, so often that it's not going to miss a beat. In fact, before, where is it? Yeah, basically to display to the LCD for the clock, it only goes down there every 1,000th time that it goes through there. I mean, it goes 990 times through the short loop, you know, and then just to increment the clock, but only every 1,000 times of the loop it would go down to the LCD just to actually display the, the time and the gallons on it. And uh, that way the LCD doesn't refresh too too often, or you might get some fuzz on the screen when that happens. So um, that gives it slows down the updates to the LCD, but I had the pulse, you know, monitoring the pulse, I had that down in here, so it was only monitoring that pulse every one thousandth time it went through my main program, and I had to pretty much pulse that input several times a second to even get that thing to miss a beat. Now, of course, it's got no chance, and I will probably can, I don't know, easily probably count a hundred pulses every second and it ain't gonna fill a hundred gallons per minute so yeah there ain't no issues powered up now it did read the last saved total gallons the phone to focus clock of course you lose that mode I set my time to 959 Set the date to Friday. I can adjust my water by hundreds, tens, or single gallons. That way, if I need to calibrate the meter, I can by going into that mode menu. Other than that, it's just going to. And as I send pulses to it, it's kind of hard to do this while holding a thing, but every minute. It updates. So right now, if I disconnect the power, plug it in, it's going back to that. There's ten more. Okay. Once that goes over, you know, to roll over the minute, it's also going to write the current value to the EEPROM. Rover, it's going to already be written to the EEPROM. Okay, so 949, it should start up with 949. See? Take the power off, no power. 949. Clocks are set to midnight, but <laughs> I could even have it save the clock, too. I thought about it. That way it only lose uh, time as long as. Um, it was unplugged. It would sort of just be minutes behind probably or whatever instead of just going back to midnight. And I might do that. Okay, literally just five minutes later I added that. It's gonna write to the EEPROM and then uh, it starts up and reads the hours and the minutes. Who cares about the seconds, right? So it's 10.05 and change right now. Oop. I interrupted the power for a second. It just starts the seconds over, but it loaded. It's updating the minutes now, hours and minutes every. Uh, oh, I forgot to do the day. Fix. Read. Um, remember position four. The day. My variable day. Oops. No spaces in there. And then down here, right for day. Compile that, which takes a second. Put the programmer on the chip. Oh, I just broke this off again. It don't even need that. That's for when the chip's out of the circuit. Then this supplies 5 volts. I just did this so I couldn't back feed, 
power into my dealer there. The chip's being powered by that. It's still there. Do the one again. Turn off the. Yes, it's communicating. It is dumping the program to the chip. And there she goes. That's why it had junk. Now it'll be okay. This is because when you first power it up, before you've ever written to the EEPROM, the EEPROM is going to start up with some crazy values. If I unplug it now for the wrote the EEPROM, I'll still have that junk in there. But once it goes to the next minute, it's going to update the EEPROM with the current gallons, hours, minutes, and day. And then from then on, the, the chip will never have junk, you know, loaded into the when initially powered up. It only has junk right after you program it, and you've never written to the EEPROM. The EEPROM probably has like random values or max values, you know. Like you can see, the gallons comes up as a sixty-five thousand, you know plus gallons, which is just all the bits filled with ones there. And the same thing for this, it just said like 55, it just didn't display anymore in two digits, but it would be 255, you know, for a, a byte, 255 for each byte. And then a word is like 65,000, whatever it is, you know. All right, it's going to update 1012. I'm sure it wrote within a second. I mean, you're talking fractions of a second. There it is, see? It's remembering everything. So I'll never have junk in there again as long as I it isn't the initial power up after you write to the chip with the programmer, you know, from the computer. Other than that, you know, now it's just, you know, if the power ever goes off, it's gonna power up with whatever the last save DPROM was, and then I can need to calibrate the clock. You know, hour, minute, second. And then the gallons go, oh you know, I lost a couple gallons. So just a couple gallons are going to go to single digits. Yeah, go to 305. Bam. It'll be set up. It'll be counting. So, simple. Made it all with Molex plugs. I've got plenty of cable. It's going to go up to the meter. Solder onto that connector. We are all set. Here is the new water meter. Zero zero one, time for hundred. Because I tested up to a hundred gallons. Huh? These are tens, ones, point one. It goes around for one. This is what triggers this reed relay. This will go be tightened. My controller down below. Okay, got it mounted up on the wall. Time is running. There we go, come on phone. 4.11, this Friday afternoon. I pre-programmed 98 gallons to match. That's where the meter came from the factory at 98 gallons. Got everything tidied up in here. Uh, my mode button and then my minus and plus buttons. I might have to put a little label maker and put something on there. Recycled <laughs> case. Way up there is the water meter, which is why we want the remote. I mean, you get to come up here on a 10 foot ladder, 8 foot ladder, but I'm on the top of it to reach this. So, let's see. Wait, start pumping some water. Uh, it's hauling ass right now. So basically, it's going seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve gallons. That's how fast that's pumping. Go we'll see what the meter is doing. Let's 
six, seven, eight, nine, forty, we won, or two, or three. So you can see it's keeping pretty much the same pace. It's beer 30 on a Friday afternoon. Of course, I don't drink beer, but it's about, pretty much about time to go, so I'll have to follow up on this on Monday. But, you know, I don't see any issues with it. Shouldn't be any issues with it. It's another job well done. And this lock shut. Cool, actually. This is like a key. So two hands. One to lift the lever up and then one to open it. So don't think anybody's gonna get in there. I do love using these connectors. It just looks so much more professional. I would like to that's the circuit board, but maybe I will later. If you watch me too. But it's not a, this thing, if this thing breaks, no foul. It's just so I don't have to climb. Focus. Way up there to that. So, it's way up in the air. It's the only purpose of this. It's not doing anything critical. Just like I come over and go, oh, there's my water usage. Overexposed in there. Floats must be down since I had the water off I, uh, while I put on the new meter and mounted this box to the wall. The spoil tape, I mean, it could be a little prettier, but eh, ain't bad. Don't look too bad unless you look real close like that. Sweet. And up a clock. Besides having my watch and my phone, but you can just look up here and see the time now. 4.15. Sweet. Okay, I got the lights out already in here. Anyway, get ready to leave. The tower's starting to fill up now. I can see that it's uh, slowing down. 9.40. Anyway, this would be kind of cool. Because I've never really... You know, had the meter where I could just kind of watch it or read it or look at it. In fact, that old meter was broke, so we couldn't read it. <laughs> so a new water meter and now a remote display, custom made. Yeah, homebrew is the best.